Orin says, why do uh, some people manifest signs of stress related to age or bad hormonal profiles, have a great heads of hair? Uh, some people is impervious to hair loss. Can you touch on this? So again, I think this speaks to the intricacies of development and specifically uh, the 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 person's person's development and like in uh, in utero, like uh, young childhood and things like this, and also the health of their parents, grandparents, etc., for like several generations back. And so I don't deny that baldness is a familial inheritance uh, type of deal, but I think that's the inheritance of uh, uh, generations of stress. And so I I I think it's not really used. Like I get all the time people send me, you know, like I eat a, like a very good diet. You know, my friend eats junk and he's not losing his hair, but I am. It's like I think it's the wrong way to think about this. Like. Your uh, individual with unique circumstances on, on your specific development, um, your friend, you and them have uh, different concentrations of like our, uh, uh, polyunsaturated fats in your tissues. You guys have, um, uh, again, different experiences in life of, of stresses that is school, uh, relationships, uh, et cetera, f- uh, family. Those things all, I think, are important for um, the development of the chronic stress related problems. And so I think really the only thing to do is focus on yourself and to try to correct the health problems in order of correctability. And so again, that's trying to increase the pe- temperature and pulse or the, the, the general thyroid function, trying to obtain, uh, uh, nutrition, full nutrition, liver, oysters, eggs, milk, cheese, uh, ripe fruit juice, etc. Um, and then again, solving bowel problems. And then the only other thing I'll add to this is like, even if living in San Francisco, you know, I, a lot of my friends, even though, you know, a person might look like aesthetically great, they could have serious problems. <laughs> and you might really not know that specifically if you don't live with them. Like there's that Alfred Adler quote, and it's like the only um, normal people are the ones you don't know very well. And I think you could flip that and say, like, the only healthy people are the ones you don't know very well. And so, uh, so again, this is uh, a situation of development and a person's relationship with stress. And, uh, and, I, and I think that's the, the correct approach to looking at it. And also, it's like, it's your future, like the, the boldness being related to um, serious health problems down the line like prostate cancer and atherosclerosis and things like that. It's just, it's just a signal that something is wrong and to try to correct it in, a, in the way the person feels is the most appropriate way to do so. Uh, let me start by saying that I really appreciate all your work you put in to clear up the idea of androgenic alopecia. However, uh, why is it that basically no one has been able to reverse the pattern of baldness without the use of well-known interventions like oral, minoxidil, uh, oral, minoxidil, finasteride, etc.? And so this puts me in like a weird spot because uh, I get email all the time from people that say uh, things are improving for them. And, and, you know, and like similar to inviting people to be on the live stream, not a lot of people want to do that. And so not a lot of people want to have their like personal stuff like shared everywhere. And also I... I don't actually, <laughs> I don't really care about like uh, saying, oh, oh, look at me. I'm right. I, I'm right. Like I think I've... A, like accumulate enough enough information to orient me in a s- specific direction of thinking about pattern baldness of being a metabolic problem and minoxidil and finasteride like i mentioned in this video um i think they're a hundred percent a trick you know a parlor trick if you if you if i may uh of regrowing hair and uh, I think at great expense to the person's own health. And there's a paper that called a uh, finasteride fool's gold. And I, I think that's a good way to think about it. And I, t- t- we talked about it a little bit on the live stream, but I stand by my nitric oxide theory of minoxidil and finasteride. Um, and, and so I think that's how they're working. Uh, that might be an, a, a big main aspect of how they're working. And Again, I just think there's there's enough information to never use these substances, and I think a new approach is the thing to investigate. And if a, if the if a person 
not a lot, again, this is the hard sell is that the person thinking that the baldness is a result of their failing health. And if a person doesn't believe that, then kind of like all is lost. Like they'll probably use minoxidil or finasteride or something. But if a person does believe that, like, like the, it's not going to fix a health, like minoxidil and finasteride aren't corrective in any way, shape, or form. And so, it, again, if uh, hypertension and the future of atherosclerosis and things like that, like those, the mechanisms that are causing those problems are also causing the boldness. Like wouldn't a person want to spend time correcting those things and the, the hair just being an extension of the overall uh, 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 kind of health of the entire body, you know, you know what I mean? So, so, so again, puts me in a weird spot. I, 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 I'm trying to, for myself, I'm, I'm trying to satisfy my, my curiosity of like a global explanation for pattern baldness, not just why like person A on the internet regrows their hair and trying to figure that out, you know? And, and if you go to, back to my last live stream on the hyperadrenalism of, of pattern baldness, I, I go through models of regrowth that I think are like explainable uh, through these different things, like using ciproterone acetate, spironolactone, uh, progesterone, like, uh, where did I, um, oh, let me, there was something I posted on my, um, oh, this was it. Can you guys see this? Yeah. So this was something I posted on my, uh, telegram yesterday and it's a 1985 paper, and they say even the removal of the testes with or without uh, oral estrogen does not consistently regrow hair as proven by observation of persons undergoing sex uh, change procedures. Because there is reasonable scientific rationale for the use of progesterone and other side effects has been uh, seen with topical applications at 2 to 5% concentrations. This prepar preparation is often used by physicians who treat hair problems both in males and females. Some patients will also note an increase in fullness of hair. Also, this could be due to new hair growth and maybe due to increased diameter of existing hairs. Uh, there are no studies which show consistent significant hair growth from progesterone. I don't even, I don't even know of how many there actually are. <laughs> uh, however, during this active phase of uh, androgenic alopecia, hair loss, patients do re report a decreased number of hairs loss. This can be demonstrated as an uh, office procedure by pulling the hairs, blah, blah, blah. Most men in active phase show greater than five hairs removed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Therapeutic trial of topical progesterone, two to five percent concentrations applied reasonable when the physician and a patient appreciate the limitations of this approach. And again, the limitations of the approach are kind of like the person's general state of health, again, their nutrition, and like what's happened to them in their life. Um, and then, and then the, in the same paper, they talk about experimentally thyroid hormone can produce increased amounts of testosterone binding or that sex hormone binding uh, globulin that can increase the rate of hair growth in animals, which explains the use of thyroid hormone and androgenic alopecia. And they say, however, significant clinical, uh, significant clinical benefits uh, has not been shown with this technique, although it does enjoy scientific rationale. But this paper really has barely, uh, very few references. And then they talk about estrogen not being useful. Attempts to interfere with androgen uh, production or utilization has been in the past involved in ad administration of estrogen systemically, topically, or through injection in the scalp. However, this again is not produced consistent positive clinical results. Some physicians formally injected estrogen into the scalp, however, the lack of consistent clinical results and the potential for distant estrogenic effects if a large quantity uh, quantities are used cause many physicians to no longer use this form of therapy. So people like just getting into hair loss think like the estrogen is like the best thing ever. <laughs> it's been uh, talked about for a long, long, long time. And uh, trying to find even the guy that basically the grandfather of uh, androgenic alopecia, the James B. Hamilton talk about estrogen. Why don't I have the paper? Oh, here it is. <laughs> he says, uh, decrease in androgenic secretion can be attained also by, upon administration of estrogens, either as a result of inhibiting a gonadotropic uh, secretions or possibly by direct antagonism between androgens and estrogens. But estrogens in themselves have been demonstrated to prevent the proper growth of hair. <laughs> so in 1942. Sweet. Okay. Okay, we'll do... Um, uh, did I answer the... I pretty much... 
And the one other thing I'll add is like, I don't like say hypothetically the, a, a balding person today needs uh, some amount of vitamin K, like 40 or 50 milligrams. That's like, pretty expensive, you know, and say they need to correct their thyroid function, say they need to use a supplement of progesterone and DHEA. Uh, and like there could be, since the environment is so bad, and I, I would suspect that baldness is getting younger, um, like an Indian article uh, said that, and this is from 2005. But again, I don't know what it's going to take, but I do know that minoxidil and finasteride are um, likely to jeopardize the person's health. 